Uh, I'm Brett Benjamin. As Jackie said, I'm a faculty member in the English department. I'm on the executive board of the Albany chapter of UUP, United University Professions, the union that represents faculty and staff here on campus and SUNY broadly. I'm really gratified today to be able to stand here and introduce today's rally, which is part of a national day of action. That is, we're talking here about particular issues at SUNY Albany, but today's event is being mirrored by events all over the country and indeed all over the world as part of a national day to respond to the systematic cuts to public education that we've seen. I'm going to speak loosely on behalf of a really vibrant and growing community uh, coalition of faculty members, faculty groups, student groups, labor organizations, community groups that have been in conversations for a number of months and that are going to continue having conversations and continue uh, building to respond to these threats. We're dismayed at what we consider to be the systematic defunding and systematic reorganization of public education and the public sector more broadly. Um, you're going to hear from a lot of these folks today. I won't try to represent their positions. What follows is my attempt. All right. My attempt to synthesize some of the many conversations that have led up to this event um, and to stake out a set of principles that underpin today's rally in defense of public education. We start with the premise, the fundamental premise, that threats to public education loom on, on all fronts. Uh, we find these threats in the US, we find these threats abroad. These threats affect public higher education, they affect K through 12. They affect teachers, professors, students, they affect staff. They loom on all fronts. In concert with a set of, you know, uh, uh, cuts, we've been given a slogan that economic crisis has pushed this uh, reorganization. Under the slogan of economic crisis, public educational institutions are being dismantled and their public mission fundamentally reorganized. In concert with the cuts then, we get an assault on a set of principles and principles that we as a coalition want to stand up in support of today. The principle that it is in society's best interest to educate its citizenry. The principle that society bears responsibility to provide all of its citizens with access to quality yes. education. Yes. Failing to do so inevitably leads to increased polarization along lines of class, race, gender, community, the like. We stand addition for the principle that education is a good in and of itself that it ought to be free from the direct profit motives of private business and the profit motives of the university. We started planning this rally and a set of other events you know, last, last year, last spring. Um, and when we did so, we had in mind a focus on the deep cuts that SUNY, CUNY, K-12 education had been facing for the last several years. We wanted to place those cuts within a broad context of national and international cuts to the public sector more broadly. As I think a lot of you know, the legislature, legislature slashed SUNY's budget by over $210 million this year. That brings the, the total cuts to almost 30% of the SUNY operating budget over the past three years. A third of our, of our operating budget has been taken away. This is mirrored, Kathy Corbo came and spoke to us, the president of the Albany Teachers Union, by deep cuts at the K through 12 level. 100 public school teachers have lost their jobs this year, and she fears that 100 more will lose theirs next year, here in Albany County. The threat of charter schools, uh, you know, um, offers a, a new frontier in this set of questions. We've seen, similar cuts across the, across the globe. Uh, the recent strikes at the University of Puerto Rico are just one of a series of, of moments of opposition to this coherent, systematic defunding of public education. 
The consequences for access, polarization, student debt, like Jackie said, the quality of education, the availability of resources, and a whole other set of hidden costs behind uh, the direct retrenchments and program closures need to be unveiled. We need to make these things clear. And then we also need to make clear that the current round of cuts are not exceptional. This is not a two-year cut or a three-year cut. It's not a response to this recession. This is a 30-year trajectory of cuts. In 1989 and 1990, the state contributed 43% of SUNY's budget. Today, that's dwindled to around 15%, and it will continue to dwindle further. What we've seen is the slow asphyxiation of a number of once proud public institutions of education. That broad context was what we had in mind when we started organizing these rallies. And it's essential to keep it in mind today. But in the wake of President Phillips' announcement last week that 160 full-time positions would be cut from the university in the next two years, that five programs, no. French, Italian, Russian, theater, and classics, would be suspended immediately, it is shameful. The University of Albany finds itself on the absolute front lines of this struggle against cuts to public education more broadly. We've become the particular case against which the general principle will be measured. Chancellor Zimfer and President Phillip have consistently answered this crisis by championing the Public Higher Education and Empowerment and Innovation Act, FIA. Um, indeed, they've used university resources and SUNY system resources to lobby very vigorously on behalf, uh, not just to the legislature, but to you, the students, to your parents, to alumni. We feel pretty strongly that FIA is not the solution to this crisis. Um, its passage would have had no immediate impact on the cuts that were announced this week. Um, and more broadly, we think that FIA is an invitation to the slow privatization, the not so slow privatization of SUNY uh, system, and an invitation to the state to relinquish all of its current responsibilities to fund public higher education, leaving a, a vacuum, a gap of funding that will only be filled by private tuition and private partnerships. Instead of championing FIA, we invite President Phillip, Chancellor Zimfer, Provost Phillips, the, the administration both here and at SUNY Central to join us and defend public education. That is to fight for the restoration of funding the restoration of funding to SUNY. More pressingly, we're alarmed and angered at this recent announcement about the massive retrenchment and reorganization of our university here. We demand every available effort be made to retain all of the full-time and part-time faculty, the graduate students, the staff members, and indeed the programs themselves that have recently been placed on the chopping block. SUNY <laughs> system has some reserve funds. Chancellor Zimfer testified to this effect in August to the Senate and Assembly budget hearings. Those funds need to be released immediately, and they need to be adopted by the administrators here at Albany to make up for uh, the cuts to those programs. They need to be directed precisely there. The program suspensions need to be considered temporary and reversible. And the administration needs to redouble its efforts to find sources of revenue that can be put to the service of reinstating these faculty members, these programs, uh, so that we have a real university of which we can all be proud. The slogans of world within reach ring utterly hollow on a week like this. Our demands are based in the first interest in the belief that we're not facing an economic crisis. We're facing a crisis of political priorities, and we need to reorient our priorities. 